Well, I figured it was about time that I talked about something that isn't a TV show. So today I'm going to be talking about the seven Texas Chainsaw movies. So, the reason that I saw these movies, even though I previously stated in my other videos is that I'm not really a big horror fan, I've recently gotten the desire to check out a lot of the basic, I mean, classic horror movie series, is, or should I say, more recent classic horror movie stuff, because I'm not talking about Dracula, The Mummy, Creature in the Black Lagoon, I'm talking about Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, these movies scream, saw, even though I think a couple of those series are thrillers also. So, first of all, I have to tell you, I went into these movies basically completely blind, except for the fact that I knew that um, the first four were basically their own little film series, then it was the remake, its prequel, and then we had 3D. But that was practically all I knew, except that the identity of the main killer is Leatherface, and of course he has a chainsaw. So, a lot of the reactions uh, I got are uh, mostly because I knew nothing about these movies, okay? So, the original Texas Chainsaw movie, I gotta admit, I was pretty disturbed by that movie, but it isn't, like, disturbed in a bad way, because I knew that this movie was R before I went into it. So, don't give me that excuse. The main reason I was disturbed is just, you know, because it's a different type of horror movie. This isn't like a whole bunch of killers, you know, trying to go after these people in their own random way and all that. Here, it's real people that are just, well, crazy. It's kind of like the Dark Knight in that episode from Supernatural. It kind of proves that sometimes real people are actually more scary than any... A supernatural being that you can, you know, create, create, or any person that's, you know, a lot stronger. Stuff like that. Uh, I ended up enjoying the movie because I got scared, legitly scared and all of that, and I was interested in seeing how these killers were all going to you know, get the main characters to get into their area, then slowly kill them off and all that, but at the same time, I found myself not really liking the movie because, okay, I hated this group of teenagers and all that because, uh, okay, first of all, almost all of them encountering the house and all that and getting in there really felt stupid, like this producers were just saying, okay, kill one off here, kill one off here, and let's just have them wander down the hallway. Come on, and like, they are just super dysfunctional within each other, arguing all over the place, and just, oh man, it just drove me nuts. Now, don't get me wrong, I went, oh, and a couple of them died, and I was nervous for Sally, but that was pretty much it. I really did not like the, this group and all that, and then also, um... The behavior of Littleface's family when uh, Sally is running away, why the heck doesn't the uh, guy from the gas station uh, run after Sally like Hitchhiker and Leatherface were just... Uh, that makes no sense because he's always telling everyone stick to the plan and all of that, but then you should be running after her because then she can tell people who you are, what you did, and... Uh, uh, Come on, right? Now, albeit, that would have made the end scene a lot harder to write because it makes sense. One person dies because of an accident, and then the other person tries to run after Sally, but then she gets in a car and is able to leave the other person in the dust. Literally. <laughs> but, I don't know, it's just stupid that he doesn't run after her. What, are you so crazy that you can't do anything because of your laughter? Hmm. Yeah, that little rant lasted a little longer than I wanted. Now, critique-wise, it's not a bad movie, and if you want to see this movie, or if you really enjoy the movie, hey, I don't have any problems with that, because I myself enjoyed it. I just have problems with, with it that bump it down on my personal scale. So, critique-wise, I'll give it four. Personally, I'll give it three, which is actually what I ended up rating it on Amazon. 
So then Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, or as I like to call it, Texas Chainsaw Madness. Because that's basically what this movie is. The first movie with the psycho elements cranked up to 11. Now, for what the movie was, I enjoyed it, you know, it was funny, I liked the characters that they had, I still got nervous, and this time it was a tad bit more for the characters, and I got disturbed, basically the same way the original one made me feel and all that, but there were a lot of moments that make me go, this is just totally stupid and all of that, it's kind of like watching Will Ferrell humor in some of his movies. Uh... I do have a couple of other nitpicks with it, though, because, okay, first of all, Chop Chop, that's the guy with the uh, plate in his head, uh, unless you look up this movie on, like, Wikipedia or other areas, or watch special features on the DVD, you would think that he's the hitchhiker from the first movie, and he, uh, and the screen, the screenwriters and all that just said that he didn't die, he just had that plate installed in his head. That doesn't make any sense, given that, you know, he looks exactly like him, so... It's a, it is kind of a small gripe, but I shouldn't have to look up the details about the, a movie or watch a special feature to learn that a character that looks exactly like a character for the first movie is not the same character. I really shouldn't. Also, Leatherface. Even though this movie takes place about 12 years after the first one, here he appears to be younger and a little more skittish, meaning that he's undergone a personality change and there's no reason for it. Now, I'm fine with you changing the character, uh, character's personality in future installments of a movie franchise, okay? But you have to have a reason for it. Okay? There's no reason here. And then, Grandfather. In the first one, he can't even hold up a one-pound hammer, and he's 124 years old. So you're telling me that when he's 12 years older, he can stand up onto his own power and throw the hammer like a tomahawk? What? No! That does not make sense. Ugh, man. And then also, the uh, sheriff and all that, he's actually a relative of Sally and uh, Frankie from the first movie, but that's mentioned in, like, one line of dialogue that we are bound to forget. And I did, so... Hmm. And then also, while it works for what it is, a comedy, it doesn't really work as a sequel to the first movie, but... The only reason we're watching it is because it's the sequel to the first movie. You get what I mean? So, critique-wise, I actually have to drop this one to several degrees. It gets free, both on critique and personal scale. But if you guys enjoy this movie, I'm not complaining because I enjoyed the movie also. Okay. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Free Leatherface. Now, I liked this movie and how different it was because I originally was thinking that, you know, making the cast smaller was actually going to hurt the movie. Surprisingly, it didn't. If anything, I think it strengthened it because we get, you know, the tense atmosphere of all of them walking through the woods and then it makes the relationships with everyone a little more intense. Uh... And it just felt a little bit different, because this time it isn't, uh, exactly like in the first one, where the main characters find Leatherface's family and all that. Here, it's more like Leatherface's family is going after them from the get-go. So I thought that twist was fairly interesting. But I also liked how this time, uh, the, uh, heroes were able to defend each other a lot better. Changing uh, Leatherface's family and all that, I didn't really mind that too much. Although, towards the end of the movie, their arguments kind of got to me. And then also, uh, Leatherface's personality. Here, he appears to be a lot smarter and, uh... 
Well, it seems like this family, um, has raised him differently. Now, I know that uh, while this is also a sequel to, um, the other two, it's also technically trying to restart the continuity, but if at the beginning you're mentioning the events from the first movie, then it's a sequel. What's up? You changed his personality again. And then, um, this, uh, this only applies to the ending and the R-rated cut. I've never seen the unrated cut, although I did look up the, uh, ending in, uh, that cut, and I think that it, I can understand why people think that ending's better. But in the R-rated cut's ending, the black guy, um, takes one of the two guys he fended off when he first escaped from the house, but that one guy, I could tell he had only knocked out unconscious, so why did you load him up at the back of your pickup just so we could have one last scare? Mm -mm. Free stars for basically the same reason as the other two, but I feel the same way. Now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Next Generation. Ooh. Okay, so this movie started off fairly interesting because, you know, we had a group of teenagers that we actually got stories built up with at the beginning. They get stranded in the middle of the woods, but it's because their car breaks down. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting because we got to figure out a legit way of how they encounter Leatherface's family and how Leatherface's family is going to fool them into thinking that they're in good hands, but then waste them. This is going to be pretty interesting, I think. Boy, was I wrong. Because at first it appeared interesting and all that, but then I realized that while I fought the family towards the end of Leatherface was kind of cuckoo and all that, this family was even more dysfunctional because it seemed like the script was having these fam this family attack each other and all that just to fill up time in the movie, whereas in Free, it felt like it was there for a reason, and the main he heroine and all that, she has plenty of opportunity to w jump through a window, <laughs> I enjoy that gag, and you know, escape from all of them, but what does she do? She takes the shotgun and yells for everyone to shut up! What? Just run out the door! What you do after free attempts? Ridiculous! <sighs> and then, um... You know that guy that has the leg trouble and all of that? The way he, uh, kills the uh, other girl in the movie, uh... We already knew this guy was crazy, okay? Just, I... Uh, that was annoying. And then the federal agent guy, what's his purpose? Because it seems like the only reason he is there is to just randomly introduce a character because whoever wrote the script can't seem to think of a good way to end it. And then Leatherface, uh, he undergoes another personality change for no reason. No, 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 no. There is a tiny bit more reason in this one because, like with Leatherface, this one is trying to restart the continuity despite having that stupid narration at the beginning say, stating that the events of the previous movies have happened. And then they also had Sally be wheeled by on a gurney rather than having uh, her as dead, like they stated at the beginning of Leatherface, but there's no reason for it. It's just because his family is so stupid, they just decided to make Leatherface insane, just for comedic effect. Oh my god. I could not stand this movie. This was the, uh... One Chainsaw movie that I really wanted over because I didn't like the movie itself. One out of five. There was really nothing good about this movie. In my mind. Okay, well, approaching 15 minutes, so I'm actually going to stop it here and then join me for part two where I discuss the newer Texas Chainsaw movies.